the one and only AEW owner and president, Mr. Tony Khan. Tony, good morning to you. Good morning to you, Dave. Thanks for having me on. How are you? Um, forget about me. How are you? Happy birthday. Happy belated birthday. What did you do to celebrate your birthday? <laughs> I did really the same thing I do every week uh, on Monday. I was working, putting together formats. Uh, sending commercial break times to the network, things like that. Uh, stuff I really enjoy doing, paperwork, and uh, really exciting stuff to do on your birthday. But, <laughs> but the stuff I do every Monday. So it was it was great. I had a great time. And uh, now I get to spend this time with you. And it's a big milestone because it's our first ever international AEW show tonight. And, you know, we've been on for now three years. We celebrated the three-year anniversary last week. And then we get to do another milestone this week with our first international show in Toronto, uh, being one of the best wrestling markets, perfect place to do it. So uh, I didn't get to do anything really fun on my birthday, but I did get to do a lot of great work to set up, you know, this great show, which is pretty fun. Yeah, the thriller in Toronto tonight, and and you're right. This is a big show. Like you said, first time out there. But you look at the card and what matches we're going to see tonight on Dynamite. This is a pay-per-view quality Dynamite tonight. Thank you. Yeah, that's how I felt. That's what I wanted to do is give the fans as much great wrestling as we could do on the two-hour card and make it feel like a two-hour pay-per-view on a Wednesday. And that's often what we try to do. You know, we've been on a really good run of ratings. And if you look, probably since Quick by the Lake, I think is the best run of ratings we've had all year, these last couple months. And in that run, I think is also some of the best shows we've done. You know, the Quick by the Lake, House of the Dragon, the Grand Slam, and the Anniversary Show, all in the last two months. And so not only our best run of ratings, but I think those would be amongst the very best episodes we've done all year and really in the three years. So it's great time for AEW and now to hit this crazy milestone today. Uh, to me, that's the big story, and that definitely overshadows my birthday. At least, please, we can, we can try to do that. <laughs> Are you not celebrating your 40th birthday, Tony? Is that what's oh, happening? Man. No, it's a I haven't stone. really spent much time on it. No, but yes. uh, but I love I love the work, and uh, you know, it was such a big event. Uh, it definitely took up the celebration time. Right. I tried to lucha sidestep my fortieth birthday too. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> it didn't work out for me. I tried though. Yeah, Welcome I gave it to the, the biz. Yeah, <laughs> Ooh, forty. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. And, uh, well, you know, it's a big week, and, you know, maybe I booked the international tour to overshadow it. That's fine. <laughs> In all seriousness, it's, uh, like you said, a pay-per-view kind of card tonight. Some of the biggest stars in AEW, some big matches, some of yep. the top rivalries head-to-head, -head, but also first-time matches, first time ever to see Jungle Boy versus Luchasaurus with Christian Cage in his corner in Christian's hometown. That's really mm -hmm. exciting, and that's a big match we've been looking forward to seeing. And uh, in particular, that really for a long time, I think we thought maybe we would never even see these two for so long were the top tag team in AEW. And even before that, were you know, close friends. And it was almost unthinkable it would ever be Jungle Boy versus Luchasaurus on AEW Dynamite, let alone tonight on TBS. Yeah, it's great storytelling, and like you said, you know, you know, you look at Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. This is like homegrown AEW talent. So this story started uh, with Dynamite, and you know, we've been able to see this relationship grow over the last three years, and then ultimately what happened with Christian's involvement. So I'm really looking forward to that matchup tonight on Dynamite, Tony. Yeah, me too. I think it's really, really exciting stuff, and. You know, in addition to the great story and how long we've been wanting to see this match uh, and the friendship between these two men setting up now uh, what is a big emotional fight, it's just going to be a great wrestling match, I think. Yeah. These are two of the most exciting wrestlers, just Jungle Boy versus Luchasaurus, one-on-one. -on -one. 
in and of itself will be a really exciting fight. These guys have the goods. They have what it takes to deliver, to back up, I think, the hype around this fight. So Jungle Boy versus Luchasaurus, I think not only an explosive situation, I think will be an explosive fight tonight on TBS. Yeah, no doubt. Plus, you're talking about Christian kind of going home. And then I saw a post from Jericho, like it's so good to be able to go back to, you know, go back home. How do you feel that the uh, Canada crowd, the Toronto crowd has been? um, Do you think they've been super receptive? Um, I feel like there's a lot of excitement in the air, obviously, uh, for you guys to jump across the border there, if you will, and come to Canada for the first time. Yes, it's one of my favorite wrestling cities. And Mm -hmm. I've come to see matches here a few times over the years split up. And it's funny because I've seen that firsthand. And I've seen, you know, speaking of Chris Jericho, who's got such a huge match tonight. So it was a perfect segue. Thank you, Mickey. Chris Jericho uh, making his return to Canada, his first match in Canada in many years. And I believe his first world title match in Canada in many, many years tonight. And very exciting to see Chris Jericho versus Brian Danielson tonight on Dynamite to have one of Canada's greatest stars, Ring of Honor world champion Chris Jericho in his eighth reign as world champion, taking on arguably the best wrestler on the planet, Brian Danielson, in another great chapter of one of the best rivalries we've had all year, not just Jericho versus Danielson, but also a rivalry that's really, I think, encompassed AEW in so many ways this year, the Jericho Appreciation Society versus Blackpool Combat Club and sports entertainment versus pro wrestling. And so I'm, it's really exciting fight. And, you know, as you brought up, Chris being Canadian, Christian being Canadian, I think there's a good chance they will get support from the crowd tonight. And, I think it's a good thing. It's it's always been that way for me watching wrestling. You know that sometimes when you have big matches in Canada and the Canadian mm-hmm. stars get involved, even if it's a big heel in the promotion, they might get a very different reaction in Canada or in Toronto specifically than they would in other cities. I've seen it firsthand, and I've actually been to a lot of wrestling matches in Toronto because it's one of my favorite cities. And... Yeah. I've seen that reaction firsthand, so I wouldn't be surprised by it at all, Mickey. I think it's a great point. Oh, yeah. I'm excited for you guys. I mean, Toronto's such an amazing crowd. It's such a great city anyway, Um, but it's such an amazing crowd to wrestle in front of because it is different than the American audience. And, Tommy, I'm sure you can attest to this, but, like, they have their own chants and the way that they – involve themselves within the matches and within the uh the wrestlers you know whatever they're doing it's really unique and it's fun and it's exciting and sure they're gonna have love for their hometown people but they're still going to they love wrestling right like so they're gonna love i'm sure they're very very excited everything i've seen has um been amazing so i'm excited for you guys i love the the it's like the soccer chants almost what what is the one tommy what's the song oh I don't own a soccer Seven team. Army Nation? Yeah. Seven yeah. Is that- no. <laughs> you can ask someone who owns a team as opposed to someone. That was my entrance music. That song was my entrance music in Ring of Honor way, way back. Long well, time. well, yeah, that was, and that might have been before, uh, you know, Ring of Honor started paying now as I do for licensed interest. interest yeah, music. I just kind of <laughs> borrowed it. They don't know that I used it. <laughs> well, you mentioned yeah, Ring of Honor. To, I own that footage now, but it mixed, but I probably won't be able to use that that song, unfortunately. Oh, dang it. Well, you talk it's about always- Ring of Honor and you talk about the support of that Toronto crowd and kind of obviously Jericho coming back and like you said, defending a championship for since forever as mm-hmm. far as defending a world championship in Toronto. Mm-hmm. As a as a longtime fan of Ring of Honor, and I'm sure there's going to be other people as well that feel the same way I do. I'm openly rooting uh, for Brian Danielson in this match. Brian Danielson to me is one of those people that are on the Mount Rushmore for the greatest Ring of Honor World Champions of all time, and Chris Jericho does nothing but disrespect 
uh, Ring of Honor and its fan base and its foundation. And of course, the rules. Ian Riccoboni has done a great job of uh, obviously expressing his hatred towards Jericho's because he's completely disrespected that code of honor. So I have no problem, Tony, right here on this show saying that I hope Brian Danielson wins that Ring of Honor World Championship tonight. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's going to be a tremendous match tonight. And to your point, Brian Danielson represents everything about pro wrestling that is pure and great, everything about Ring of Honor uh, that has made it such a great promotion for pro wrestling. And Chris Jericho slaps all of it in the face. He represents sports entertainment, which is synonymous with cheating. And now we've seen Chris Jericho on AEW Dynamite disrespect the entire legacy, 20 years of Ring of Honor, a lot of great wrestlers, people who are in AEW today, like Brian Danielson, Claudio Castagnoli, and other great stars like Adam Cole, and names that are not in AEW, great names who competed in Ring of Honor and are part of the video library and the great history and traditions of the company, like now known as Seth Rollins and uh, of course, Sami Zayn was formerly yep. El Generico. Uh, of course, AJ Styles, uh, part of that library. Uh, Kevin Owens, known as Kevin Steen. So a lot of great stars uh, today in the world of wrestling that are not in AEW or Ring of Honor, but are part of the legacy. And in, that is in addition to the great names now competing in Ring of Honor and in AEW with that history. To me, Brian Danielson, as much or more than anybody, is synonymous with the ring of honor brand and mm -hmm. i think that's why even before i bought ring of honor and and before there was this co connection between AEW and ring of honor his sister promotions that brian danielson was in the inaugural ring of honor hall of fame class yep so completely agree with you dave and i think it's one of the reasons i'm really excited for tonight's dynamite on tbs and also you got to factor in the fa uh you know Chris Jericho physically assault, uh, assaulted Kerry Silken, guy, you know, a, a founder of Ring of Honor, an owner, former owner of Ring of Honor, and then what he did to Bobby Cruz. I'm, I haven't talked to Bobby Cruz. I haven't seen, but I'm hoping Tony Bobby Cruz is okay after what Jericho did to him a couple weeks ago. Well, we saw Bobby Cruz wearing a neck brace. There you go. What Jericho did to him, which was so uncalled nice. for, and obviously Chris Jericho, no honor, and. I think it's going to be a great fight to see, again, uh, sports entertainment, cheating, all of that spectacle that Chris Jericho represents up against Brian Danielson. But there's a twist to it tonight. Uh, Chris Jericho bringing his wrestling boots, bringing his wrestling persona to see the Lionheart versus the American Dragon for the first time on television, I think is another exciting component to this. And to do it in Toronto on our first ever international show i think it's going to be tremendous and and like mickey said it'll be interesting to see how the crowd reacts to it all yeah i remember uh the first time ecw went to japan and it was such a big deal it was a big deal to paul because he's like now we're legit world we're worldwide our, our titles are are worldwide they're being defended outside of the united states mm -hmm. uh, i know for myself i brought house of hardcore to ted reeve and, you know, you always hear the history of professional wrestling and then to sell out that building uh, meant so much to me. And, you know, because, again, you're, you're taking your stuff outside of the, the country for you. Now you're telling me you've been to shows out there. If you could just step back for a moment and just look at like what you've accomplished as well as like it's it's a surreal journey. But like, what does it mean to you? Like as an owner, as a fan, like, cause I read this tweet of you guys are opening up more tickets. When I see that, I love it because I'm like, your hard work is being paid off. So like, what does that really like mean to you as somebody from, from a fan, from a business owner? Like, like, do you really appreciate what you have done and, and the significance of tonight? I think it's one of the biggest milestones yet in the company. And, so it's definitely something for AEW to hang our hats on. That yep. We've made our international debut tonight. We have this huge crowd coming. It's such a commercially successful event. And I believe we'll have great shows tonight, too. You know, as you said, this has a pay-per-view feel. All five matches have a good amount of build. 
Uh, some of them are first time matches and a couple of these matches are big rematches. And we also then have uh, some stuff we've never seen before. A big match coming up that I'm really excited for that. It really is a grudge match. Billy Gunn along with the acclaimed versus Swerve Strickland. And we saw Billy Gunn get involved at Grand Slam in the world championship win of the acclaimed. And Swerve has been so pissed. And we've seen he's really, really blaming Billy Gunn for the loss of the world tag team championship. And I think in this week in particular, it's just a really exciting match. And I'm excited to see it. I think it's a clash of styles. It's two different generations of fighters. And definitely a grudge match between Billy Gunn and Swerve tonight on Dynamite on TBS. If you don't address him as Daddy Ass, we're going to cut your segment, pal. Daddy (laughs) Ass. Oh, my God. Uh, Another thing where if you really like, if I want to enjoy professional wrestling so, so much and, and the way I do, or something that is so, so different is a match that I'm really looking forward to because I've seen it before and I friggin loved it in the sense of I've seen them work before with Pac and Orange Cassidy and the difference of styles, but then how like it for me, it really proves what a great wrestler and you and I've always talked about how Orange Cassidy is. We all know how great Pac is, but those two guys just have this amazing chemistry for two guys who couldn't be polar opposites Mm -hmm. of in-ring style. Yeah, totally agree. And what an amazing rivalry it is that goes back a few years in AEW and they haven't met too many times on TV. They've been a few meetings on TV and, and a couple on pay-per-view in particular, their first match was a classic orange Cassidy actually made his singles wrestling debut in AEW against Pac at the original revolution pay-per-view. It is to this day, one of the most talked about matches in the history of AEW it's digitally it is one of our most watched videos of all time, and it's generated a huge amount of interest in Orange Cassidy and Pac and in AEW. And now Pac has traveled the world as the All Atlantic champion. In recent weeks, we've seen him find a darker side, probably a side he hasn't embraced since he first arrived in AEW, and he's resorted to some chicanery to win some of his matches. And it'll be really interesting to see. Uh, now that these two have such a grudge between them, uh, how this goes down tonight, because uh, there's a lot of history between Orange Cassidy and Pac, but I don't think there's ever been more tension, more anger than there has been since Pac not only hit Orange Cassidy in the head with a hammer at Grand Slam and put him out of action, but then also followed up hitting Trent with that hammer, which brought Orange Cassidy back like a house of fire and a, really a, a more angry Orange Cassidy than we've seen. I just think that's going to be another great match tonight. You're totally right, Tommy. I'm, I'm very excited about Orange Cassidy versus Pac tonight. And if you want to talk about history, ladies and gentlemen, 30 years ago today, there was history made in Canada where one Bret Hart won the world title. So I love the fact that these things keep happening because history, wrestling history is made tonight because AEW makes its debut in Canada as well. I love that. Look at song. you tying it together. Let's Three. fucking go, Tony Khan. Let's <laughs> big fucking go. matches and big champions. And speaking of great champions, the interim women's world champion of AEW, Tony Storm, teaming up with a former women's world champion, Hikaru Shida, taking on the deadly team of Jamie Hayter and Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, that is a match we were actually going to see about a month ago, and Britt attacked Sheeta on AEW Dark in her dressing room, took Sheeta out, put her out of action, and now Sheeta's gotten back into the groove here in America, and Britt's not going to get out of it that easy. We're going to have this great tag team match. Uh, I've, we've been looking forward to it for about a month now since All Out, and I'm pumped up to see that match with four of the top wrestlers in AEW. I think that'll be a tremendous tag match. Another grudge match, a night of those five grudge matches. And as you said, we're going to see 
all these matches tonight, AEW Dynamite live, 8 p.m. Eastern time on TBS. And Tony, uh, next month, uh, full gear coming up in New Jersey at the Prudential Center. It's, it's funny how that venue in New Jersey has become big in AEW. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to what we're going to be seeing the next few weeks as we get closer and closer to full gear. I am excited about that too. Full gear. At the Prudential Center, it'll be a huge event. Tonight, AEW Dynamite on TBS, our first ever international show, free for anybody who can get TBS. I think that's a, another big milestone for all the fans. They can watch for free if they got cable or a friend with cable. So a lot of exciting stuff coming up, and, and five big grudge matches on the card tonight. Should be a really, really fun night on Dynamite. And, and thank you for bringing up uh, all the excitement around the event. Um, Really appreciate you having me on to talk about it today. No, we love it. And, like, we talked a lot about the acclaimed last week because, you know, it's certain things like that that catch on to the mainstream. And you're we're actually seeing athletes doing the scissorings and stuff. And, and it's crazy. Sometimes those types of those types of things grab a hold of people and get people to, to start tuning in on Wednesdays as well. Who doesn't love a scissor? Yeah. No doubt yeah. about it. <laughs> Well, something to keep an eye on. It looked like somebody else trademarked it, so they may have to keep an eye on that, too. Somebody trademarked it out from under them, so we'll have to watch that. Oh, boy. Ooh. Oh, boy. Oh, Tony, rut, rut. This is... did they just file for it, or they actually got it? Because, you know. Well, it was Mark Sterling. So, interestingly, Mark Sterling filed for it. We saw that, mm, uh, in, you know, oh. pretty, pretty underhanded. Lawyer. So it's actually somebody in AEW. Son yeah, of a bitch. Uh, AEW Dynamite tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern time, live on TBS. Don't forget to watch. We'll be talking all about it tomorrow on a Thursday edition of Busted Up.